Students, welcome back to my another e-lecture session on fluorescence microscopy. I am Sheikh Abu Sufyan. Welcome you to AS Academy Learning Forever. At the end of this e-learning session, you are able to define fluorescence microscopy, differentiate between fluorescence and immunofluorescence, draw its ray diagram and understand its design. State application of fluorescence microscopy. Now first see which compound is called as fluorescence compound. Compound which absorbs shorter wavelength radiation that is UV light and then re-emit energy as a light of longer wavelength that is visible light are called as fluorescence compound. Such substances example dye, uranium ores, uranium glass, oil droplets are called as fluorescence or fluorochrome and the phenomenon is known as fluorescence. Application of this phenomenon in microscopy to observe the image of an object is called as fluorescence microscopy. Now let's see what is the reason why we use fluorescence microscopy. This specific protein cannot be studied without staining and also these proteins are not stained by ordinary staining agent and hence such sample are stained with specific fluorescence dye and studied by using fluorescence microscope. Request site for fluorescence microscopy. There are four important request sites for using fluorescence microscopy. First, staining of microorganism or biological sample with fluorescence dye. Second, primary or excitation filter. Third, dichromic mirror. And fourth, emission or barrier filter. So these are the four request sites for studying any sample by using fluorescence microscope. Now let's see about the ray diagram of fluorescence microscope. So we need light source. Then this is the excitation filter. It is also called as primary filter. This is dichromic mirror. This is emission filter. To keep the specimen, we need to use the stage. There are two lenses, objective lens and ocular lens. You can see fluorescence image by eye. Or if you want to measure the fluorescence light intensity, then you can use the specific detector. So these are the different components of the fluorescence microscope. Now let's see how fluorescence microscope work. First important thing in case of fluorescence microscope is mixing the biological sample or microorganism to be stained with fluorescence dye. So after mixing this biological sample with fluorescence dye, you will keep this sample on the stage of the microscope. After that light will be illuminated by the light source. So the light which is illuminated by the light source consists of multiple color light. Excitation filter which is kept in between the light source and the dichromic mirror. It will block all other colors light and transmit only blue light. Further this blue light which is transmitted by the excitation filter it is reflected towards the sample by dichromic mirror. The sample which is stained with the fluorescence, now it will absorb blue light and emit green light. This green light will pass through the objective and reaches towards the emission filter or it is also called as barrier filter. Barrier filter will allow green light to pass to the eye and it will block any residual blue light from the specimen. Now you can see the image with the fluorescence light that is the green light. If you want to measure the intensity of the light which is emitted by the specimen then you can use the special fluorescence detector. So this will detect intensity of the light emitted by your specimen. So this is all about ray diagram of fluorescence microscope. Thus the stain portion of the specimen is observed as a glowing green against a jet black background. This is how image of the fluorescence sample it is seen under fluorescence microscope. Whereas the unstained portion of the specimen are invisible. So remember that the stained portion of the specimen is observed as a glowing green against jet black background. Whereas the unstained portion of the specimen are remains invisible. Point to be remembered in fluorescence microscopy are first we have used primary or excitation filter. So primary filter it block out all other color of light and transmit only blue light to the specimen. Second we have used dichromic mirror. So what dichromic mirror does it reflect blue light towards the specimen. Third barrier filter or it is also called as emission filter. So this filter will block out any residual blue light which is coming from the specimen and allow only green light to pass to the eye. Barrier filter or emission filter is generally selected based on the dye that you are using. So we have seen about fluorescence microscopy. Remember that fluorescence microscopy can be useful 
when specific fluorescence dye is available for staining molecule of the interest. However, if you are studying sample for which specific fluorescence dye is not available, then you can use another technique called as immunofluorescence. Let's see about immunofluorescence. In case of immunofluorescence, the fluorescence dye is chemically combined with the antibodies. Antibody to which fluorescence dye is attached are called as label antibodies. These label antibodies are mixed with the suspension of the bacteria and preparation is then examined under fluorescence microscopy. The bacterial cell that have combined with the label antibody will be visible in the microscopic preparation. For example, if you have used the antibody that is to be bind to the specific component of the bacterial cell, then it will bind to that particular component and that particular component can be easily studied by using fluorescence microscope. Likewise, if you have used the antibody that is to be bind to the cancerous cell, then it will only bind to the cancerous cell and this cancerous cell can be visible under fluorescence microscope. This technique is known as fluorescence antibody technique and the phenomenon is termed as immunofluorescence. So main difference between fluorescence and immunofluorescence is in fluorescence microscopy you have stained sample with only fluorescence dye whereas in case of immunofluorescence you have stained sample with antibody which is labeled with fluorescence dye. So if you want to stain specific molecule for which if that molecule specific fluorescence dye is not available then you can use label antibody which has specific binding ability to the molecule of the interest. Let's see about application of fluorescence microscopy. So fluorescence microscopy it is used for structural identification in fixed as well as in case of live biological samples. Fluorescence microscopy is also useful in labeling of molecules or specific protein within the cell. Measurement of cell physiological state. It is also used for disease surveillance and the diagnosis of the cancer and many diseases caused by the bacteria, viruses or protozoa. So this is all about fluorescence microscopy. Let's recall what you have learned through small question and answers. My first question is, which light is emitted by fluorescence compound? So we have seen a visible light, it is emitted by the fluorescence compound. So fluorescence compound, they absorb UV light that is shorter wavelength light and they emit visible light that is longer wavelength light. What is the role of primary or excitation filter? Answer is, Primary or excitation filter, it block all other light and transmit only blue light. Third question, what is the role of barrier filter? So we have seen barrier filter, it block all residual blue light which is coming from the sample and allow only green light to pass. Last question, antibody to which fluorescence dye is attached is called as, it is called as label antibody. Thanks for watching. If you like my this e-learning session then press like click below and do share with your friends. For more such learning subscribe to my channel.